We greet you all with the peace of the Lord Jesus. We're going to open our Bibles in the book of Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, chapter 55, verse number 6. The book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 55, verse number 6. Amen. The word of God says as follows. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. We adore you, Lord. We bless you. And we ask you that you can bless us through your word. In the name of Jesus, amen. The church may be seated. Bible says God is great in counseling. And this passage that we just mentioned, we just read, talks about advices from the Lord. An advice followed by an alert. And this alert is to reach a purpose. The advice is seek, seek, and call upon his name. And the interesting word is while. And what about the purpose? To find, to be together. To find him and to be together. And when we take the chapter 55 of Isaiah, the Lord begins the chapter this way. Everyone who is thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Yes, come, buy wine and milk without money, without price. And after this advice, there is another one. Incline your ears and come to me. The praise groups sang a song that says, come to me. The Lord Jesus, when he looked through the multitude to the crowd, he says, come to me, you who are weary, and I'll give you rest. And he concludes saying, and you'll find rest for your souls. And here, come to me, and here, and your soul will live. As for with you, I'll make a covenant permanent, giving you the mercies of David, the sure mercies of David. So the Lord is inviting us to make a covenant with him. The same covenant that, covenant that he did with David. It's an eternal covenant. As for when David finished the Psalm 23, he says, And I'll dwell with the Lord eternally. And the word of God says, Seek the Lord as you can find. As long as you can find. What is sick? 
is to go after, to look for. Today we have that expression, very common in our days. I'll seek, I'll go, I'll do a search on the internet, for example. And when we seek for something, it's because we, we don't have it yet. If you don't have an information, you're going to seek for that information, right? My wife is at the shopping. So I'll go, I'll go after her, Christiane, right? So to seek is to go to encounter someone to be together. To seek also is to examine. For example, by the supper with the, with the Lord, the Bible says, examine the man at himself. So the Word of God talks about a woman that has ten coins. And this woman lost one of the coins. What did she do? What did she do? She lit a candle. She is sick for the revelation, for the light. And the Holy Spirit revealed himself to her life. And after the light comes, she did, she did a search and a cleanup. The Bible says that no one will see God without sanctification. And right after, what she do? She found it. And what did she find? She found the item that she got lost. She had lost. So the, the, the lost coin talks about salvation. And when we look at this text and the light of the Holy Spirit, God is holy, the Father. And when she entered the way, she found what he lost, the salvation in Jesus. You see the Trinity in that. In the book of Songs of Solomon, there's a moment that the Lord says, Open, my sister, my wife, and she did not open. She, uh, she allegedly excused herself saying, I took my clothing, I washed my feet. And at the moment, the Lord was giving her an opportunity. But she thought that she could let that for later. For another time, another moment. And the word says that when he was not present anymore, when he left, she decided to seek for him, to seek him. I saw and I couldn't find him. I plead, I cried out, he didn't answer. But she was found by someone else. Not for the beloved of her soul. She was found and she was spanked. She was harmed and she was removed her clothing. And the only thing that she could expect after that was the death. So this text that we just read here, it is... I said in the beginning, God is great in, in counsel and an advert, uh, uh, alert, an alert to whom? To all the ones that has their ears, their ears inclined to listen. And the word says, I seek the Lord 
Seek the Lord where you can find him. It's an opportunity. When you look at the parable of the, de the ten brides, all of them were called and they all could participate in the, in the feast at the banquet, but not all of them sought for all the, the, the needs, all the, the elements needed. So then they were left behind, left outside. And the word says, seek the Lord as you can find, while you can find. How can I seek the Lord? Maybe you're here tonight and you don't, you're not familiar with it. How to seek the Lord in the right way to find Him. Sometimes you seek and you couldn't find it. But the Bible says that we should seek with a purpose to find Him. And what is that found in the Bible? And you, and you seek me, and you found me. You find me when you seek me with all your hearts. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So the way to find, and there is a way to find, and to, to seek and to find. Because the desire of the Lord is, give me, my son, your heart. I found David according to my heart, because it's the first commandment. To love God upon everything, above everything. When we seek this love, we we found by him. Seek the Lord while he may be found. And another reference is call upon him. Isaiah says, Jeremiah, then you cry for me and you go and you pray to me and I will hear you. So the Lord is saying, if we seek with all our hearts, and if we cry out, and if we go to His encounter, and if we call upon Him, He will listen to us, and He will answer us. But what does the Lord have to answer you tonight? It's written here. Let's go. Jeremiah. Seek me. And I'll announce you great things that you don't know. Invoke me and I'll show you firm and wonderful things that you don't know yet. This is the advice of the Lord. What the ears didn't hear, the eyes never saw. This is what the Lord is prepared to show you now. If you plead, if you call upon Him, if you cry to Him, you see things that you never imagined. The servant from the Old Testament, they had several experiences. In the New Testament, Paul had a great experience. He went to the heavens. Yesterday, in the message, we, we hear the mention of that. This is the purpose for the service, to let you know that this is what God wants for you. So the Bible says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. To seek is to cry for help, to request aid, to supplicate, 
to invocate, it's not to give an order, it's to humbly ask, to supplicate, to implore. And He is God and you are the needy. God does not need us, but we need Him every day of our lives. So if God is far, seek to Him. Seek Him with all your heart. And you, you will find Him. And the text says also, call upon him while he is near. But let me tell you, brethren, God near. Is it good? Yes or no? You could make a choice. You want a God that is near or a God that is together? Together. Together is better, isn't it? Something is God being near. When Jesus walked upon this earth, he was near several people. But there was a team that was closer, together with him. So the desire of God is not to be near, but to be together. Because the name of Jesus is exactly that, together. Emmanuel means God with us. And Christ in us is the hope of glory, of the eternity. So seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Because he is near, when he is near, it is easier. God is among us. He is present through the figure of the Holy Spirit. And you don't need to yell. You can talk normally to him. It's a God that is accessible to every and each one. And Paul says, talks about that, this accessibility of God. And he says, all that call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And God will make no exception. Because there will be no difference between Jewish and Greeks. Because God is the God of all of the ones that call upon Him. And to, to call upon Him is exactly that. It's to be saved. What is to be saved? It's to be preserved. It's to be kept safe. It's to be protected. By whom? By our God. Our Savior. And Lord, and when we see here, seek the Lord why he may be found and call upon him why he is near. There's two verbs. I was never good in Portuguese grammar, but the teachers say that the verb talks about action, right? What that means? To seek. It's an action. So you position yourself, you stood up, and go like the woman to go after what she had lost. To call upon him is the same thing. It's to supplicate for him to be together. And interesting that when talks about verbs, when you go to gospel according to John in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God so the the verb the word that is the Lord is the action the divine action from God towards us through Jesus so this this verb this search it's an action of of God in, in my favor, in your favor, to give us a blessing through His Son, Jesus Christ. Seek the Lord while He may be found. My brother, anytime, whoever does not make a decision today, 
because if you noticed, the verbs here are in the present tense. If you listen to the voice of the Lord today, do not harden your heart. There is a song, an old song that says, tomorrow by me might be late. The ten brides, five of them thought they could leave and go after the oil. The unfaithful church in, in Songs of Solomon, she thought she could look for, for the beloved of her soul whenever she wants. But when she decided, he had left. The moment that we are leaving is the moment that God is acting in my life, in your life, in our lives. And the advice of the Lord is, seek today to the Lord. Because today, He is accessible. Uh, he is able to be found. Call upon Him today so He can be together Him now. Because there will be a moment that will not be near. He want to be together with you in this moment. In this prophetic moment that we are living. The Lord has shown three women. And these three ladies, they, for a period, they have their religion, their understanding, their ideology, and they are comfortable with uh, their way of thinking, thinking that everything is okay. And in this gift, the Lord shows that they received an invitation to, to find the work of the Holy Spirit, not a religion, not a church like Maranatha Church, but a project. And the Lord showed that these three ladies, they were invited to receive this gift, this godly gift, which is the work of the Holy Spirit. They were invited to leave the place that they were before to come out and to walk to be in a vehicle because it was to the point of departure. There was a song that the children sing in the express, we travel and we have a passport. The name of Jesus is the passport. And who is the visa? The Holy Spirit. So you are being invited by the Holy Spirit to be in this new heaven, new earth. You are in an in embassy of Christ tonight. So you can live today with your passport, with a visa, stamped by the Holy Spirit toward eternity. This is the desire of God for the life of the ones that are here tonight. Also, the Holy Spirit has shown a woman. She kept with herself something that she considered like a treasure. And those are memories that she had in the past in the presence of God. And she, she's valuing those experiences for very long. But tonight the Lord is showing to her particularly He wants to put in her heart a living coal. And this living coal will make that she has new experiences with the Holy Spirit. The Lord wants to make her, the fire of His Holy Spirit lit and higher. The experiences that you have 10 years ago, it's okay. But the Lord has something new for you. And these new experiences that He's preparing for you, the, the, the old experiences are good to revive, but there is a need for us to have new ones because the Bible says that the signs will follow the ones that serve the Lord. The, the believers, the, the signs, the experiences will follow the ones that believe. 
so you can feel young spiritually in the presence of the Lord. Because the same God that operated on the past, He is able to operate it now. Jesus made the promise, right? That He will be with us to the end, and the signs will follow us. This is the project of God. Tonight, the Holy Spirit can bring fire to your Holy Spirit, so he, you can feel the desire to have new experiences with the Lord. The Lord shown in another gift, a man that he is in fault with the Lord. You know what that means, right? You know God, and you're not in the right position according to God's will. He has been witness of several wonders in his life, but today he is apart from the Lord. That's why we chose the song we Still Have Time. It's time for you to think that today is your, t your time to seek the Lord. Don't leave for tomorrow because you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. There's a note saying, don't wait for tomorrow what you can do today. Uh, the Brazilians has this procrastination habits. Stop that because spiritually that is not good. They used to lock the door after the thief entered the house. But today, if you listen to the voice of the Lord, do not harden your hearts. The Lord is revealing himself to you. He is manifesting his power through the songs. He is talking to your heart. And there is a project from him to save you and to deliver you and to forgive your sins. So your sins need to be forgiven all of us and tonight the Lord is up to do that to you to forgive your sins and to make you a new creation so in the gift the Lord shows that this man thinks that he can wait until tomorrow but the Lord says no do not wait do not postpone tomorrow does not, does not exist what exists is today now the present and this is God's will for your life. And today, today that you may take this decision in your heart. Seek the Lord why he can find. And call upon him as he is near.
I invite the church to stand. Let's have a word of praise to the Lord. Lord, we adore your name. We bless you. As for one day, you have reached us. And you have brought us to your holy presence. To show us what is the real love. What is to feel the real peace. And we, I want to praise you because it's good to be part of this work of the Holy Spirit, the Redemptor work, and it's to be part of this marvelous people where you speak to us every day. Every time you come to your house, we feel your presence. And you are the one that searches deeply and you know us truly and you loved us. And you don't look to our flaws, but you are the one that pour out your love every day upon our lives. We can feel this true love and how good it is to feel this love. How good it is to feel your presence and to be in your house and to lift up our praises because you are the one that worthy of our adoration our glorification. We love you. We love you. We love to serve you. It is good to be in your house, to bless your holy name. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Lord, we are grateful to be here in your house. And we have looked for you, and you have manifest your power. We bless you for your great love and mercy upon us. And we ask you that you can keep sustaining us and manifest your, your power and to make us sensitive to your voice. And that can happen in every and each one that came to your house tonight. Bless, bless us during this week in all activities. We supplicate your blessing. And thank you for your presence among us in the name of Jesus. In your name we say the grace of our Savior Jesus Christ, the love of our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit can be poured out upon our, for us now and forevermore. The church may be seated. The church was transmitted. You that came to us. And if you desire in your heart a piece of clarification, a prayer, after the service. Uh, our service during the week is Tuesday by Zoom and Wednesday by Zoom. Thursday we have a presential service. It's a service of prayer. Saturday, 7.30. Sunday in the morning, 10.30. Sunday school. And in the night, 7.30 like tonight, like today. So you are very welcome and invited to come back. Come and participate with us. Amen. Reminding the church that this week will be a week of noon prayer. We don't have a presential services, but whenever you were, pray to the Lord by noon for the work abroad.